Hello, everybody. Um, I'm doing this uh, Panther Blitz thing. So hopefully, and uh, we'll have some games starting soon. Yeah, there we go. I'm actually black. Sam was actually lucky. He was playing cool white games. So now I'm playing uh, first game is black. So I'm going to play King's Indian. Uh, I think Sam wasn't a big fan of King's Indians, but I actually love these guys. These openings, they're all very fighting openings. And of course, um, we want to have fun here, right? Actually, look at some chat with you guys earlier. And um, you guys know anything about the games like I do, you know, legendary heroes are not actually the highest tiered heroes. They're mythical heroes, okay? And um, so they're way above and much stronger. Anyway, so that's, that's about the legends and heroes. So let's go back to our chess uh, heroes here. And um, the usual plan is, of course, to get c5 and get the d4 knight out of, the, out of the way. So white probably should play c5 at some point, try to prevent uh, that thing from happening. Because after c5, uh, white's pieces are kind of um, stuck on the um, unattractive squares. And the question is, which rook should go to d8? I'm a big fan of the, uh, um, the rook on a d8, because that rook on f8 should go to e8, I think. Protected pawn on e4, and then we'll have some classical attack here on the king side. And that's the whole point about the king's Indian. Uh, we want to attack white. We want to make it a big fight. And now uh, bishop c3 was slightly inaccurate because I'll be forcing white to give up his bishop on c3 in order to free the square on b5 with his knight to return. So he has to play this, that's right. And um, so now there is a question, should I play knight g4 and try to put the knight on d3 or something, or just try to create some threats here? And of course, it's not so simple. Uh, I actually noticed a lot of people played really great chess in the banter blitz and uh, gave a really hard time to the grandmasters today. So it's not gonna be a walk in the park. And it's not gonna be, ooh, just gave me a huge thing to attack your opponent on e3. Um, yeah, mind your structure. Uh, the structure should be, a pawn should be connected most of the times. Yeah, g3 was not such a great move. Uh, ideally, you don't want to play on the flank where your opponent is stronger where he is planning to attack. So because you open up your own king, for the attack, and you have to sacrifice the exchange now to correct that um, mistake, right? <clears throat> right. I, um, I'm going to try to play as, my, as many games as possible today. So that's what the reason why I mentioned that I'm not going to play 5 so so 3 plus 2s, because we're kind of limited on time. Um, but I will try to play everybody. Uh, I already saw some people playing some gems earlier. So those guys will... Uh, have to wait a little bit, I guess. Okay. I want to go to give um, other people some chance. And of course, this rule goes to D2. And we need to um, unblock my pawn on E3. That would be the right way to say it. And if you do this, then Bishop G4. And bishop takes d1, e2, queen e3. I have to infiltrate with all my pieces. So obviously rook takes because your queen is still under attack. Yeah. Actually, you know, this chest 24, they have a birthday code today. So let's see who else is challenging me here. I'll go away from the first guys. We have 2,400 people, we have 2,500 people. Ooh, this is gonna be hot. So let's try with a 2,394 person. Okay. And I'm gonna play my uh, hippo thing. I love hippo and I want to see how different people react to this opening. Okay, um, what's going on? There is probably some lag with the internet. There's been some couple of storms lately, also here in the area. And let's see, so bishop d6, d5, e5, very solid, very standard. So 
I'm waiting for Bishop G4 is also very standard, but you give me a tempo. That's why I always like it when people play the Bishop G4 or Bishop B4, <clears throat> because then I get to play H3 or A3 with the tempo, since uh, Black doesn't usually want to exchange the Bishop for my Knight and give me a pair of Bishops. So the Bishop usually goes somewhere. So that means my G pawn, that blue pawn, he can start uh, moving forward with the tempo. After c5, black intends to play a4, so I have to stop it, so I have to play for myself. And at the same time, I get the square on b5 potentially for my knight. Uh, because uh, white's, oh, black's knight on d7 actually is now not so great. Uh, so he wants to play c4, maybe take, take, take. So the idea, maybe I can play c4 myself now, yeah? Maybe it's not so great, but uh, let's, let's see. At least that will make uh, sure that the rook on c8 is now wasting time. And if black does take on c4, then it will open my bishop on g2. And ideally, black should uh, think about uh, putting his knight on d7 back to b8, c6, b4, because that's the ideal square. And if black plays d4, then I'll probably want to play e4 at some point, or maybe just dance around and play knight g3 and um, get some nice squares for my pieces. So as I'm saying, knight g3 looks pretty good. Um, I'm quite not yet committed with my king. I'm not sure where it will castle. Ideally, I go with the uh, knight f5 from g1 and then queen c2 sort of try to create an attack. But if black blocks the position with d4, then I'll have no choice but to castle short side and then uh, go for the standard king's Indian attack on the king side. Okay, so uh, black is just sort of, um, again, um, waiting uh, for me to commit. He's also planning to play e4 maybe at some point. So that's an interesting cut decision. I can take on d5 and try to go for the e4 square positional thing, but um, let's not do that. Let's go straight. Uh, let's try to get that one uh, bishop away from black. I think he, he should have played bishop f5, um, truthfully, but um, I'm not sure. OK, so I can take on d5, then play knight c4, and that will give me the spawn. So let's do that. Um, because he takes on d5, I take on e4, right? So that's the simple tactics. And if black plays knight e5, then I still take on e4. So let's play knight c4. I just want to grab this pawn on back on d3. And I want to see uh, what was black's plan. Because now I, if I take the pawn on d3, I have a nice pair of bishops. So let's grab this, bishop b5. Let's move the rook because I want to keep my knight on c4. It's a very strong knight. It cements my center. It uh, controls a lot of squares and takes away a lot of squares from my opponent. And that's um, part of the prophylaxis that uh, Sam was talking earlier about. So prophylaxis, centralization are key concepts that you guys uh, need to master if you want to you know, go for the top uh, titles. And... Um, Again, uh, if you uh, don't don't play like me in the serious game, because in the serious game you should actually you know develop castles, take center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In the blitz games, uh, you know once you're a GM, then you can do a lot of things uh, for fun and try to break the rules. Alejan was famous for breaking the rules. He was uh, again famous opening, right? Alejan opening. He moves with his knight. A lot of tempos, waste a lot of time, but because he understood uh, the basics and he knew when and how to break the rules. Once you once you know how to do that, then you can uh, do whatever you want. Okay, so bishop d6, my plan probably is to, I don't know, play bishop f3 and use the open g file, sort of try to, right, so my opponent understands that, so he's trying to meet this idea. And um, so let's play rook g4 for now, bishop g2. And black is running out of time, unfortunately, but uh, his position is not that great anyway. Right, the bishop goes to h5, ideally, and uh, grabs that e8 square from black's uh, rooks. And uh, thank you for the game. And uh, I hope um, you analyze it a little bit. Mr. Okay, let's see who we have here. There was this guy who was challenging me like 10 minutes in advance of the show. So let's play this guy. Um, there were a bunch of people uh, challenging me like way, way, way in advance. Okay, so I'm gonna play my London system 
And since you're Kremlin student, okay, let's see how you play against London. You should be able to know the correct way. All right, E6 is one of the ways to play this. Uh, 92. So this is all very standard. Bishop G3. And the other idea, and now there is Bishop B5 move, but uh, Bishop D3 is considered to be the main move, of course. 95. And um, actually, Sam played this way against me like uh, many, many years ago, but he didn't know the trap, so he fell for it. So I was quite lucky to win that game. So what are we going to do here? Let's just castle first. And then we go for the sort of Dutch setup. We're going to play f4. And then bishop will go to h4, which is exactly the reason why we developed London bishop on g3, right? So this knight on e5, he's, uh, he's going to give us a beachhead for our future assault. So bishop goes to h4. Now we're ready to start our attack. At some point, knight g4 is a threat, you know, trying to uh, use the pin. So why not? Let's, let's do that right now. Um, as a black bishop on d6 is kind of awkward. Uh, he's not that great. He's looking at the pawn structure. Knight on c6 is also restricted. So white has a much easier game now um, playing this position. So let's grab this, play queen h5. And uh, because black doesn't have a five, there is, uh, it's very tough for him to protect the pawn on h7. Okay, so uh, Mr. Kramnik, you don't look your London system a little bit more. Uh, that Okay, and this guy was also challenged me far in advance, so I'll take him. Uh, okay, I'm playing white again. Ooh. So I think they decided to give me a lot of whites, uh, just like to Sam. I actually don't mind, you know, playing black. So if you want to give me black, somebody wants to play white, uh, that's, that's fine. Okay. So E4. You know, just to make sure your preparation for me is uh, a little more complex. So you guys have to prepare not only for London, but also for E4. And of course, you all know that I play Hippo, so you have to prepare for that as well. That's uh, actually a good um, board. Why is he not playing? Um, so I'll give him a couple more seconds and then uh, I'll abort. Okay, so let's abort this game. Uh, can win them all. I guess I lost some rating points. Uh, maybe not. Okay, um, Kasparov fan, you actually played some people earlier, so I'm gonna skip you for now. Uh, there are 26, 2700 people challenging me. No five minutes. So there is an FM, 2700. Okay, fine. Let's, let's play an FM. <clears throat> okay, E4. Wait, 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 what happened? Yeah, your move. E4. Okay, so let's see what um, you prepare for my uh, hippo setup. Uh, so you know the moves, right? Everybody knows the moves. That's why it's so easy to play. Because the first moves come so easy. G6, B6, G3, B3. Double fianchette to your bishops. Rock and roll, right? Okay. H4, okay. Yeah, so usually I play h6 against h4 because if I play h5, I don't like to give up that g5 square for nothing. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Here, in fact, um, it's not really hippo because I'm playing e5 right now, but that's because um, I think the bishop on d3 is not well placed on this particular structure. And if white plays bishop e3, then my knight can develop to a6 and g4, which is the minus, the only. Uh, like soft minus behind white's h2, h4 pawn push because you, know, you can no longer play h3 and cover the g4 square. But that's a sort of a minor thing. And right now we're coming to this, I um, actually have this very interesting idea to play knight f6 anyway. And it's a small little trick. I invite white to take on e5 with the knight. And then I can be sneaky and play knight h5, knight d7, knight g3 and sort of try to ruin white's pawn structure. Of course, uh, let's see how well this comes because, uh, uh, so I'm hitting the knight and I'm hitting this bishop on g3. If knight is seven, knight g3, I want to take that bishop first, um, right? But it, uh, so, and the bishop cannot really go anywhere. So 
So he took it, all right, so I get the um, pair of bishops. I might actually get a very powerful bishop on a5, uh, and I might consider castling uh, alongside. Actually, white allows me to take on c3 and completely ruin his pawn structure. Let's do that. I'm a big fan of Nimzovic, so let's, let's do this, okay? Because, um, ooh, he's not scared at all. All right, that's good. So that, let's this be a fight, yeah? And now, of course, we're using the pin with the bishop on b7, pinning his um, things. So let's keep going. So I retake this uh, central pawn. And white is stuck with a couple of um, double pawns. I think my king is slightly safer. Um, maybe only just slightly, but nevertheless. And we can actually go into the um, end game maybe, yeah? Let's see the technique. Because ideally with the, with the when, you have, when your opponent have double pawn structure, that means his end games, all types are really bad. So that's, uh, I mean, of course you can play Fe4 and then try to, you know, go for some uh, complicated things, but you don't need to complicate uh, things too much, right? You just sort of need to be simple, play simple chess. So attack on uh, A2, Rook is also coming to E2, and that means uh, White is in trouble. Okay, Rook A1, Rook E2 check, coming, and then Queen B2. Queen, King B1, again, I can just take on C3, I can play Rook E2, and things are not really looking good for White, because if he plays Rook D2, then Rook E1, so he has to play something like Queen, well, he has to play, right? Queen C1, then uh, it's game over, so he has to play this, and then there is a check on a2, oops. Okay, so let's do this, check, check. And there's this rookie four check, right? Okay, so. Okay, um, again, structure. I'm always talking about the structure in my games. Uh, there's this guy, 2400 rated, he's uh, challenging me. So let's see if he's, uh, he's been challenging me for quite a while. Let's see if he's, uh, he's, uh, at the board, because if he is not, then we're gonna move on. Oh, okay, so he is attentive. And patient, he's been pay waiting for like uh, 20 minutes maybe. All right, so this is Hippo again, um, with bishop on g5. The idea is uh, you simply try to deny black to play e6, yeah? Pretty smart, pretty smart. All right, and so this game becomes more like Pierce. This is uh, how white usually plays in Pierce, except he doesn't move his bishop so much, but yes, he goes with g4. This is all pretty standard. And black plays knight f6, knight b6. Oh, again, this is all pretty standard. And um, I can actually think about playing h4 here and try to close the road for white in the future. But let's see what he wants to do here. I just want to finish my development. Potentially, I want to play maybe castle or maybe just rook c8 or 97 even mm. and keep my king in the center. Yeah. No, actually, I don't want to keep my king in the center. So let's castle. Let's play normal chess. c5 will be probably too much. King b8 first. Move the king to the safer location. We prepared our rook to be placed on uh, c8. So let's maybe grab this first, rook c8 first. I'm preparing knight c4 potentially. Um, h5 looks interesting, but I don't want to open the position too much. On the other hand, let's play c4. Now let's just play d5 and go for the b4 thing, right? So maybe rook c8 was not the best plan. The idea is here for black now to go for this b4, a5, and try to uh, create some sort of an attack. White, of course, plays f5, that he's right. So let's do that. Um, probably I have to take this thing. Bishop goes to f8. Yeah, white, white has managed to create some problems for me. Yeah, good job, man. So queen e8, maybe queen d8 was more accurate. So let's go b4. Mm. 
Yeah, my knights are kind of not that great. Yeah, knight on b6 combined with the pawn on c4 and d5 was probably not the greatest idea. Uh, so he just can do this. But okay, let's do uh, obvious uh, b3 thing because we do it all the time, right? We, we've done it in the King's Indian. So let's, why not do it again here? So knight c4. And because queen is uh, tied to the bishop on h6, he has to play something like queen g5, queen f4, but then queen b6. Yeah, he should have played bishop a2, of course, and, uh, you know, exchange my knight on c4, but still, I get a lot of counterplay, right? Uh, two moves ago, my position was completely blocked. I had no uh, potential for my pieces, but after that pawn sacrifice, and white probably should not have taken on b3. Usually in Kings in, in the Queen's Indians, uh, uh, Kings, in, Kings Indians, sorry, um, White just uh, moves the bishop somewhere, allows uh, black to take on a2, h2, and then king a1, king h1, right? That that helped uh, to protect the king. Uh, this way, white has to give up his rook now, and I think um, black is completely winning because all my pieces are in the game. So what is this? Queen a2, b2, b1. Take, take, um, well, a lot of things win probably, but let's bring the knight. Um, I'm a big, uh, I have a soft spot for developing, the, completing the development of pieces. So let's do that. So I'm hitting that pawn. So knight b2 check. That means rook comes to c3 with the tempo which also means I can play queen c2 check next move. And uh, uh, what did he do? He did something, right? So check. Um, probably not the exact way to play this position, but okay, this should still work because I have rook c2, right? So rook c2 wins the queen. Unfortunately, it's no, no longer long live the queen. Okay. So let's see what else we have. Um, we have uh, the, this guy played already. We have chess cadets. Okay, let's play chess cadet. So let's play a London system again. So you guys staying on your toes. No, no, no heaper all the time. And we're playing 2,500 guy. He should know what to do. Oh, the Dutch. Actually, I have a very funny move here. Uh, this is called g4 thing. Um, 94, mm, interesting, I guess, uh, bishop g2. Then we can go for the grob, right? Or just take this thing. Uh, he wants to play queen h4 at some point. I don't know, it looks really strange. Um, okay, knight f3, finish the developments. Finish the development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay, this is actually not bad for black. Um, but you have to know what you're doing. Um, but it's it's actually not a bad way for black to play this. I remember. Uh, yeah, I've been looking at this for a long time ago. Actually, together with my wife, we we're looking some possible development for white um, that is non-standard. And that's one of the things we came up with. You know, just straight straightforward H3 G4 right away. Usually white does it later in the game, but uh, what the heck, why not immediately, right? After all, it's your major plan. You're trying to hit black uh, at the strongest point. And we probably should just play d5, prevent black's uh, d5. And now we go with the standard knight d4, long castle, double rook on the g file, bishop f3 thing. So let's do that. Let's just start. Um, uh, putting pressure on the black's position. Uh, knight h4 also looks interesting. Um, and I'll just bring the king first. Rook c1. Yeah, trying to be very solid here. Um, again, e3, preparing the knight d4, and rook g1, bishop h3, rook g1, etc. etc. So knight goes to d4. And with that pawn on h5, it just gave you the g6 square for your rook, uh, potentially, right? I mean, knight b5 also looks pretty good. Um, 
because 97 is a threat, black has to play 96 probably. That gives me a tempo and knight on c6 is not that great. So let's play rook g1. And as I'm mentioning, I'm trying to go for that rook g6. And the only thing question is whether I should put my bishop on h3 or on f3. And I'm not sure which one is better. And uh, since I'm not sure, let's just play bishop f3. It uh, protects everything. And rook c8 was um, kind of timid, yeah? Because um, it just gives me a lot of uh, time, a lot of squares and a lot of pawns and knight f5 comes. And look at the black pieces, uh, knight a6, bishop b7. Not where you really want to have them. And rook f6 is unplayable because rook takes knight b7. But you still play it. And um, therefore I take this bishop. I like three bishops. And this knight has to go back. And then d6, d7, queen d5, extra piece. I think everybody um, can be a great player with an extra piece, right? So we have some uh, Kasparov fan on M. Okay, so um, let's see, Don Papa. Mm, I don't know about Don, but uh, I know that there is some pizza uh, named after the guy in the US. It was pretty good pizza. So let's play this guy. Actually, no, they should have some uh, pizza delivery place in this place, uh, Chess 24. You know, it's like uh, universal catering to all. It's not just only chess desires, but maybe you can do Chess 24 pizza. I wouldn't mind. You know, just make sure it's uh, maybe it was good pepperoni and uh, yeah, some good stuff. Okay. Then again, I don't know. So, you know, you can play chess and then enjoy having a good one. Um, right. G3, bishop, G2. Very, very, very. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, bishop, B3. Right, okay, so black, uh, this, this is actually a very solid setup for white, as I mentioned to my students. G3 is always, you know, a classic. Yeah, it's, it's timeless classic, it's a very solid move. There is no way you can lose the game right away to anybody. It doesn't matter who is your opponent. So, um, very, very, very solid move, recommended. So my thing is now what to do here. So I'm going to try to dance around with my knights and provoke my opponent to playing some d5 or some weakening move, which would uh, let me exploit uh, some weaknesses later. And, um, hmm. Okay, so let's play e5, because uh, he was right about ready to play e5 himself at some point, I guess. So I like this move. Because he plays d5, then I can consider playing knight d4 even. But knight on d3 took care of my b4 square, right? So I, that is no longer an option, right? So let's see what the, he does against knight d4. Because if he takes on the knight, I grab the bishop. Bishop has nowhere to go. But if the bishop takes on d4, that means uh, he gives um, away a very strong bishop. I mean, uh, the position is still complex. My bishop on b7 is worse than bishop on g2. That's one strategic concept you guys have to remember. Usually in such positions, bishop on g2 is way stronger. It only not only protects the king, it uh, influences uh, the center and also prepares, uh, supports white's f2, f4 movement. Okay, three. Wow. Okay, why not? So let's play knight c5, bring the other knight in. Uh, if he takes on c5, I guess I take with the d pawn. Right, then you can do that too. And uh, the question is, yeah, what, what am I going to do after this move? I don't know. I, I didn't go that far with my plan. He probably wants to take on c5. And if I take with the b pawn, then queen takes a5 uh, is, the, is the start of a huge mess. So f5 is a possibility, and uh, probably a good one, because I need to start opening the e-file for my rook, since white's rook is on a3, not doing really much. So I need to do something. I need to open the center somehow and get my rook on e3 thanks to the d4 square. Uh, thanks to my d4 pawn, which provides that particular square for the rook. Uh, well, thank you for the exchange, I guess. Um, I'll take it. And then uh, I bring my uh, rook on b8. It's not the saddest rook. It's quite a nice rook, actually. Uh, he wants to take on d4, I guess. Uh, mm, OK, so we'll let him take on d4. 
because we're gonna bring our bishop into the game. And uh, the bishop is now ready to go to f5. And he also covers the e6 square because white was ready to play knight e6 at some point. Actually, I should just probably take this guy. He should not have given me that knight for free. And um, because uh, I'm just winning suddenly, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, white had some compensation, but now he has absolutely no compensation and it's a technical win. So um, unfortunately, the game ends uh, prematurely. So let's play bishop h3 just to make sure there is mate, only one coming up. And uh, there is no uh, defense, I suspect, because queen one is just seems to be unstoppable, right? Right, so a pair of bishops, you know, don't give your opponent free stuff. When you have time, you have time. This guy had like two and a half minutes, you know. When you have so much time, just think and make sure you don't blunder stuff. Because blundering stuff to the grandmasters, whether it's a pawn or a bishop or a piece, you know, we love, we love your free stuff. If you want to give us free stuff, we'll take it. Um, okay, let's play with this guy. And... Um, I'm gonna play e4 again. So Hippo, London, h3, g4, King's Indians. Uh, unfortunately, I don't follow the chat. I don't see the chat uh, where I'm playing. I see only the board. So I don't know what's going on, um, but hopefully uh, you guys um, following. Oh, g6, Pierce. Actually, I like Pierce. You know, I've been playing Pierce uh, lately for a year and a half now. Absolutely love this opening. And I used to play bishop e3, but bishop d3 probably is more accurate because I really want to transpose the game into this. Um, so black wants to play e5. Probably I want to play bishop f4 to prevent that. Because if black plays e5, he gets really good version of the uh, king's Indian, I guess. That's the whole idea behind Pierce. You, you sort of get similar structures. And I sort of, um, maybe e5 was more accurate to play yeah, immediately. But on the other hand, rook on e8 doesn't really belong there. So I don't know. And uh, the idea is if white managed to play e4 in the structure, he is usually considered to be, uh, to have a superior position. Because uh, now we suddenly get the French structure, right? And white has this very nice square on d4 for his pieces. And Black's bishop on g7 is now sort of uh, staring the wall, right? So White has um, a very uh, comfortable game here. He can start preparing for this attack on the king side. Uh, so queen e2, rook d1, knight d4, and then potential h4, h5, and then uh, Black is just simply has no counterplay. Um, he has no gray squares for his pieces, while White's just so, so, sort of rolling. Um, I don't know. Well, it looks really, really dangerous for me. That's why I don't like uh, this position as black. I play something different when I play Pierce. And right now it looks uh, just like h4, h5, and then potentially rook e3, rook h3. Uh, there was some fantastic game by uh, Magnus. Uh, he was playing um, Kramnik. Uh, well, queen h3 is also possible, right? Because I want to play g4 maybe even. But right now rook e2. Make sure not to give up your um, critical pawns, right? So double your pieces here. Um, G4 is coming. Six, and I take on G6, maybe. Uh, there's a huge mess. Maybe F6 is correct. But then, then okay, I can just probably take on F6 and take on G7. That uh, pawn structure should be good for me. So let's play G4 because uh, I'm stronger on the king side. And I, you guys probably heard me that if you are strong on some flank, that's where you should play, okay? And now h5 is coming and that king on g8 is really having a hard time to be protected. White's rooks are ready to join the game, right? f3, rook g2, king h1, rook g1, but black rook on e8, there's no easy access to the h file or g file and all white pieces are in the game and he's ready to attack. And knight on c4 is kind of an outsider. So that's why I was thinking about playing f6 because black is sort of in desperate situation. So he has to do something. Um, so that's queen h5. And then there's already 
Um, so he's, uh, but there's mate in one, right? So I don't know what's going on here. But it was a pretty good game for 1700. Um, not bad. Just work on your structures a little bit more. Uh, we have Undisputed. Let's play Undisputed. This guy also challenged me way, way early. And uh, unfortunately, I had to decline new challenges because, you know, the show hadn't started. But now it started. It's your turn, man. Let's, let's see what you prepared. Um, okay. Replaying my trusty Hippo. So he heard me probably saying that G3 is very strong. So it is no longer Hippo. Let's play a classical English uh, game. Let's confuse uh, the matters. I always suggest to my students to play more than one opening to make sure that the opponent has a hard time to prepare for you. And that's one advice that I keep sticking to myself. I actually try to prepare a surprise for my opponents in the openings. Just earlier this week, I was playing the Bundesliga. I was playing Luke McShane, fantastic guy. We've known each other for many years. Uh, last time before this year, we played maybe like a millionaire tournament way back uh, that was organized by um, uh, that, uh, that, that guy from Brooklyn, yeah, GM. Uh, right. So um, that was, uh, and way before we both were playing, and I think Aeroflot, uh, which is incredible. Hum how fast the time flies. Anyway, and uh, you know, I was playing black, I didn't know what to do. And then of course uh, you study opponent games a little bit and then you realize, you know, there's uh, some ideas. So I looked at his games and I saw that the Karakan, he was uh, playing very strange uh, lines against Karakan. So I decided to play it. And it was a very fun game. I had some advantage, actually messing something up here, but E4, so let's, you know, uh, the other thing about this, uh, I never like when my opponent tries to, you know, cross into my space. My space, I consider anything which is on my half of the board. That is my space. Yeah, that space belongs to me. Okay. So uh, whenever somebody moves into my space, I get very defensive and I can't get very aggressive. So um, I try to immediately get rid of all those things that cross into my space. Uh, so there are two ways to play this position, A4 or Rook D8. But rook c2 gives me a tempo because that pawn a2 is hanging. So um, be careful when you move for your rooks. Your rooks should be on the central positions or on this open uh, semi semi open files, right? They should be behind the uh, the cavalry because uh, the cavalry is just gonna ruin your day with a quick attack, right? So you, you should be very careful. That's why I keep my rooks on the simple. Squares. Rook e8 protects the pawn on a5, and rook on a8, it helps my a pawn to push. So, rooks behind the pawns, always. And um, grab stuff, it's always a good uh, suggestion. Make sure to pin your opponent uh, pieces with your bishops. That's also a good uh, thing to do, I think. Um, I don't know, centralize. I think Sam was also quite. Um, uh, uh, good about it. He, he likes centralization. And when you have uh, extra material, you should just basically change everything going to the end game. Because that extra material is um, especially strong in the end games. Okay. Uh, so let's grab this bishop. Uh, if they give you a chance to enter, go for it. Uh, take, and if he takes with the pawn, that's rook e1. If he takes with the queen, queen takes and rook e1, and white is still lost because, see, the rook on e8 was there put for a reason, right? That's the ideal thing that you get. Both rooks are on the central files, and they managed to have their say in the game. Okay, uh, let's play the next, oh, wait, wait, this five-minute game. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm not playing five-minute games. I think I mentioned that. I have to abort. I'm sorry about that. So um, um, three plus two declines. Okay, seven wonder deal. Let's play three minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing five minute game because uh, this is only one hour. I'm trying to be fair to everybody. So give, uh, give them a chance. Um, let's see, okay, four. Let's play my old love, which is Sicilian Khan. I played this opening for 20 something years before I realized, you know, that in this position, I'll tell you a big secret. I think c4 is the most difficult move uh, for black to meet. Okay, you heard it from me. 
as a big specialist of the seal and guns, C4 is the most principal move, in my opinion. And it gives black problems because, uh, okay, uh, maybe it doesn't give uh, huge problems, but uh, I, I never like to be binded by that E4, C4 structure, you know, the merits sort of structure. I always hated it to play against. I always loved it when I played with, with white. So that would be something that, again, I would recommend. Uh, so uh, queen f6 was kind of standard in such positions. Knight f6 is also standard. You know, queen g7, rook g8, bishop takes f2, but queen f6, um, I kind of like because, um, yeah, that this is this also uh, queen g5, uh, bishop g5 is coming probably, right? Okay, uh, not quite yet, not quite yet. So we have time for 97. Bishop g5, queen takes b2. And the idea is that queen on f6 actually uh, sort of helps me to deal with some, maybe I can go for g5 and knight g6 plan. Right, so that's one of the ideas that White has. He, he can exchange this uh, dark squared bishop. And let's give him that plank. So let's give him that bishop. And I want to play knight g6 and g5 Elihai in structure. I still think the structure is pretty reasonable unless, and let's go into the end game. Let's go into the end game because the end game is the part where the real player's strength uh, actually comes through. I mean, anybody can memorize line, anybody can memorize huge uh, tactical computer lines, but the, when it comes to the end game, it's all about you. Your understanding, it's about your um, technique and about your understanding once again. I mean, nobody can help you. You have to, you're on your own. That's why I love end games. Okay. So my queen on e5 is nicely centralized. So it's time to develop my bishop on c8. Once it's being developed on b7, and I'm gifted uh, something here. So I don't see a refutation. So I'll grab it and I'll grab it again because uh, my knights are protected and I love extra pieces, as I mentioned before. If you want to give something to your grandmaster, make sure you get something in return. Otherwise, you know, the grandmaster will take it and I'll just castle because there is uh, also made on g2 incoming. So he has to play something like this, but then I move away and dance around. So rook d1, queen c7, knight c5, not bad for, um, it's actually playing not bad for a 1900 guy, but f5 is necessary. I'm trying to get rid of active pieces. And again, getting rid of my opponent's active pieces has been my mantra for basically my whole professional career. Again, that's uh, following a Petro great Petrosian does the prophylaxis thing. It's part of the prophylaxis considered to be. So, uh, knight c5 maybe, rook d1, okay, rook d1. I, have F I get the tempo then because I can attack his queen. And then me that means I can probably play queen e5, just probably, probably just queen e5. Uh, right, so why is trying to attack me somewhere? Okay, go ahead. So I need to open his king as well, a4. So let's play h3. Uh, right. Okay, so he's, uh, he's actually not bad. He's playing, he's playing, he started to play really well. A rook on c3, knight on c5, both very active uh, pieces now. Let's play b4. Hit the rook, try to get the rook to come to c4 and close the, the diagonal for the queen. Ah, and I forgot, of course, my excellent uh, choice by exchanging pieces. Remember, I told you when you up the material, go to the end game. There we go. That's a plan in, plan in action. I'm going for the exchanges. Uh, King c7, rook e8. There's rook e1 coming. And uh, king f1, bishop a6 is probably, well, bishop a6 anyway. And rook moves rook e1, and I'm forcing him to take on e1, and of course it's mate. So it was a slow grind, but um, you know sometimes uh, actually 95 is quite popular sacrifice, but uh, unfortunately it didn't quite work here. 
So, especially in Sicilians, 95 is like classical sacrifice. And in Khan, also, if you guys look at some of my games, I actually lost a fantastic game to a very, very young Magnus Carlsen back in 2000. 2005, my Sicilian Khan against him. And uh, he managed to hit me with the knight on d5. I thought there was no, no compensation. But then, while well, things started happening, and I'm going to board this game because uh, my opponent is, is not at the board. So I'm going to accept next challenge, which is going to be my AI or my L. I always mix I and L because they look pretty damn similar. OK, um, G3. Since this uh, looks like AI to me, I'm going to be a hippo. I'm going to be hippo man. Hippo is actually a great opening to unmask um, a lot of, um, had, has been used by me to unmask a lot of um, people that have been trying to use computer systems. I'm not saying anything about this particular game, but because uh, this opening was uh, used extensively by me and practiced against the AI, AI um, like different engines, different times. And I found it to be a perfect weapon because the computer is completely lost how to develop his pieces here. He sort, of, uh, he sort of develops his pieces, but then he loses the thread, has no idea how to continue. And um, okay, I mean, Black gets the center, but then uh, what else he gets? Uh, he has no clear plan. And I slowly sort of trick computer into playing d4, e4. And then once the, the, those pawns move, the center is fixed, then, you know, uh, I'm enjoying the game because uh, because it's close position and I get King's Indian reversed, right? So it's, it gives me a huge attack and possibilities to play for a win. And I I used to uh, play usually computer like three one three two and then you know play this opening that made him it was black or white doesn't matter. But that was like the, ten years ago. Engines since that time they they are so strong now. There's no way to beat them anymore. So, Hippo was a great opening. It still is sometimes a surprise weapon. And it's, again, easy to play, easy to learn. Not much going on. Um, C4, so it's castle finally, because knight on g5 protects the pawn h3. That was part of my plan. And we should just start uh, rolling the pawns, I think. Rolling the pawns like f4, e4, and start uh, utilizing that pawn majority on the king side. Okay. Also, the bishop on e5 looks going to look pretty good on d4, right? Or the knight looks, uh, might look very good on d4. Those are very nice squares for the pieces. So, so let's check. And f4, as I promised, you know, you need to, if you have an advantage, you have to go for it. You have to use it or you're going to lose it. One of the rules. Universal probe rules okay, everywhere, chess, etc. So e4, we have to start rolling the pawns. Bishop g6 maybe. Then we can offer the exchange of the queens, but that will be like a slightly lame way to play this. On the other hand, that bishop on g6. But okay, um, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a lame guy, so let's play queen f3. On the other hand, he might take on b3 now and uh, give me some hard time by playing f6 or c2, right? Because uh, that will conciliate. That, that's the reason why it was uh, placed there, to give me a hard time. So if black takes on b3, then you win a tempo by playing rook d1, right? That gives you a crucial tempo. Be very careful be, uh, of uh, automatic recaptures, OK? Because now you get the square on a1 for your bishop, and you get a, and, and you get a tempo. Okay, so um, I think it was a good uh, tempo for me because rook is on the central file. I'm ready to go f5 and uh, start hitting that pawn on g7 or something. So maybe queen g3 first, right, to pin the bishop and make sure black is in trouble. Uh, so let's let's do that. Queen g3, and now I'm ready to play f5. Okay, check is always good. Um, there was a famous saying in Russia, when I give a check, I'm not scared of anybody. Okay. So we get uh, time for quite a few more games, hopefully. And we got 2,700 player, but uh, I can play these guys later. Myself, I mean, right? So let's give you guys a chance. Uh, 
Um, otherwise, I mean, which grandmaster is going to play you uh, if you're at 1400, 1500 outside of the event, right? So, not many chances for that. So, let's play you guys. Um, again, Hippo and G6. Yeah, so, you guys you see, it's very smart. Yeah, that, you should play something like that against Hippo because that sort of breaks the um, breaks the rhythm. 92. Uh, probably he wants to play d5. So because uh, the attack doesn't work anymore. h3, g4, there's no attack. The bishop on g7 protects well, uh, black too well. So we switch to plan B, which is uh, centralize and uh, centralize once again. 95 looks pretty good to me because black is stuck now with a weak pawn on d6. And then I just need to get my knight to d5, and then uh, black will have serious problems. King knight e5 is good. I like this move. So as I promised, knight goes to f4, and then it goes to d5. Uh, after the knight gets to d5 with the queen on b2, and thanks to the exchange of dark squared bishops, king queen g8 will start to feel uncomfortable, right? Because of those knight of six check, queen of six, knight e7 threats. You guys see the picture. So this is one check, but it's not scary. Not really scary. We just hit the knight and asking him, okay, so you gave me a check. Now what? Because, uh, oh, you know, there was, fun, uh, there was one great movie that I really liked. It's called iRobot with uh, that guy, Will, in the main role. And, um, I don't know, what was the topic I was saying? Well, there was something about simplicity. Uh, simplicity of action, of thought, and uh, playing pattern. So I just want to play f4, and um, that's a good, uh, good move probably, right? So we don't want to allow his knight to go to g4. And uh, black is sort of preparing against uh, white's e4 himself. So this is becoming sort of a Dutch structure. Uh, my knight is on d5 is, is good, but his knight on e5 is also good. So what we're going to do is try to perhaps just double the rooks first. And we need to exchange the queens. I think we need to exchange the queens. So how I'm going to achieve that, I have no idea. Uh, the other thing I can do is probably go for g4 some points. That means I'll have to play f4 and g4. I think that will be the right uh, course of action, actually. So let's play f4 first. And then king f2, maybe even. King f2, just to make sure the pawn is protected on e3. And then g4 and open that, um, f, hit that f5 pawn, because it's really well placed. Uh, the, uh, I would say the overall evaluation of the position should be close to equal, I think. Uh, but, okay, so knight is ready to play knight b4, maybe. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of scared. Um, let's play knight h2, uh, king h2, yeah. Threatening knight of six, check. So he has to protect against that. Queen of seven, rook of eight, queen of seven it is. And now let's play, actually e4 is interesting, but maybe not today, yeah. Okay, so let's continue with the plan, let's play g4. This is actually a very risky chess for me because I'm opening my own king and black is sort of uh, can uh, do a lot of things here. Um, well, we'll see, right? Uh, this move. Okay, so queen probably d3. I have a bad feeling about this, but um, right now I can uh, hit the rook. So 97 was the uh, small mistake probably. It was probably a small mistake. And uh, probably he's thinking about g5, yeah? I mean, I would be. Okay, but let's grab this rook. Let's play queen d5, make sure we're pinning him. Small pins are important. Um, rook e1 maybe. Well, I don't know. It's uh, really not so simple anymore. 
because if I change the rooks, maybe this rook, then knight d4. Okay, so rook d3. Uh, and then I can uh, protect my pawn on e3 because that's, uh, that's an important pawn, bring my king into the game. Uh, the second rook goes to h1, king of two. And I'm sort of ready to go queen h3 and uh, hit that flank. So we obviously we change stuff. And this is completely winning position, of course. But yeah, well, I got really lucky because, you know, those forks are kind of uh, amazing for the knight. Centralized knight, uh, strong thanks. Okay, so let's play this guy. And uh, let's see. Okay, so let's uh, let's play the London system again. I'm playing Galactic. I was a big fan of the Sil uh, Silver Surfer. Uh, so Galactus, right? Uh, I mean, they mix it up in the, um, with the Fantastic Four. Bishop D6, I, th I thought it was inaccurate slightly because of Bishop B5, but okay, let's see if I have a good memory. Yeah, so Silver Surfer was like one of my favorite stuff, um, comics. Uh, but uh, let's see. So if you take with this pawn, I have to play here, then it's check and queen a3, right? So this is a famous trick. Uh, Black wanted to play c5 because he wants to undouble his pawns. But usually this leads to this pawn being lost um, because I simply attack it, right? And uh, he cannot move this pawn because queen is undefended. Otherwise, I just grab on c5 and I have an extra pawn. And I'm a pretty happy guy. So let's grab this pawn. And let's, um, yeah, he plays bishop b5 to prevent me castling. So let's hit this bishop. So we can castle. And uh, let's see. Bishop d7 gives me a second pawn on a7. I can play, play also c6. No, I cannot play c6, but I can just castle. So extra white, extra pawn for white. I would say this uh, gives me a, a big advantage. I'll grab this bishop and we can castle. So we can castle and now we can just sort of push the pawns and be happy with the outcome of the opening. Uh, bring the queen to the game, attack the b5 pawn. Well, if you want to give me so many pawns, I'll take them all because three pawns are better than two, right? So queen a4. I'll just, if I grab this pawn, rook d4. Okay, so let's play e4. Let's just block. The knights are best uh, protectors, blockers of uh, pawns. This is like famous saying. So d3, and of course, we should probably just start pushing our pawns. So let's push the pawn, b5. Uh, queen b3. Maybe queen a5 was, was more accurate because I would not allow his queen to join the game, but uh, he just blunders the exchange. So that's a good deal for me. And um, right. And I think it's basically game over because um, knight f4, of course, maybe. Yeah, but was he trying to achieve? I can just play f3, right? And um, Queen h3, gf4, knight h3, king g2, black is left with ruins in his position. And I have extra rook, so king h1. No attack, yeah. So, you know, don't give free stuff, again, unless you're absolutely sure you get some sort of compensation. In this particular case, you have no compensation, queen can go to d2, it's an illusion, but okay, let's make sure. Sometimes even illusions can hurt, yeah? Uh, so king g2. And um, everything is hanging. Let's just give him uh, this piece, I don't mind. We have so much extra stuff. Get rid of your opponent most active pieces, collect the material, win the game. Okay, and I think we are uh, done with our one hour slot. Let me sure. Let, let me ask what our, my bosses say. 
Uh, hello, Pascal. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Do they want me to play more? I think uh, there is something. Yeah, there is uh, Alexander playing Blitz. Okay. See you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy anniversary to Chess24 and goodbye. Mm -hmm.